evening, everybody. Welcome to episode two. Um, felt yesterday's episode went pretty well. Uh, so I figured uh, before I get really sick, because I think I'm on my way off to a good cold, uh, I'd film another episode. I um, think on this one I want to get a little more species specific. So uh, I want to talk about a species that I recently acquired. Um, just kind of a show everybody what it is, uh, talk about it a little bit, and uh, kind of go from there. So uh, I recently acquired, uh, probably about two weeks ago, a uh, bit to sna nasocornus, um, rhinoceros viper, a uh, very close relative of the gaboon viper, uh, same region in uh, western and central Africa. Um, these guys are confused all the time. Uh, you know, I've seen a couple of uh, good posts on Facebook about uh, Western Gaboon Vipers and Rhinoceros Vipers and um, Eastern Gaboons. Um, you know, Chris Wynn uh, posted a really funny uh, 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 meme of one or a um, diagram of one because a lot of people that are posting on the internet, uh, especially ones that have these species for the first time, um, it's a little scary because some of them don't know what they're buying. And uh, while the antivenom is the same uh, throughout, their venoms uh, can be drastically different, especially between the Western Gaboon and uh, even the Eastern Gaboon or the Western Gaboon and the, uh, and the Rhino Viper. Uh, so, you know, these, these snakes, you know, you got Bittus rhinoceros, which is the Western Gaboon. We got a uh, uh, Bittus gabonica, which is the Eastern Gaboon. Uh, and we've got, uh, bis, uh, excuse me, Bittus nasocornis, which is the Rhino Viper. Uh, they're all very easy to tell apart. Uh, in my opinion, uh, I, I currently own the Western Gaboon and a, uh, and a Rhino Viper. Uh, but in my opinion, the uh, Rhino Viper is the most beautiful of all of them. Uh, the color patterns that you get from these guys and, and their faces and, and how aggressive they look and just how intimidating they look. Um, you know, the Gaboons, while, while a close relative, uh, they don't look all that intimidating. In a way, they look kind of cute, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, you know, they, they just don't have that menacing face. Their face is very, uh, very smooth. Uh, obviously, all three of them have some version of the nasal horns on them. Uh, the Easterns typically being the smallest, the Eastern Gaboon, uh, or uh, Bittus Gabonica. Um, Bittus Rhinoceros uh, has horns that are bigger typically than the Eastern Gaboon. Um, and then your Rhino Viper, uh, or Bittus Nasocornus, has uh, a set of horns on them that kind of differ from both, uh, and their faces just have a very menacing look to them. Uh, as I said earlier, come in some striking, beautiful colors. Um, so, uh, you know, a little while, we'll, uh, we'll take mine out, we'll take a look at them. Uh, excuse me, her, I keep calling her a him. Um, but unfortunately, uh, my plan eventually was, uh, once I learned the breeding characteristics of these animals, uh, was to possibly get some gabinos out of them, uh, which is a, a hybrid cross between the gaboon and the rhino viper. Uh, but idiot me didn't realize that I bought two females. Um, so... I guess sometime in the future when they figure out how I can breed two females together will be good. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to get a male sooner or later. Uh, so a little bit about these snakes. Um, they're very sedentary snakes. Uh, they're not very active. Uh, they can be seen sitting in the enclosure uh, because they kind of mimic the wild. They can be seen sitting in the enclosure in the same place for days at a time. Um, and not move. Uh, it's it's really a uh, a sight to see. Um, you know they they typically sit and wait for their prey. Uh, in the wild, there's not a ton of bites uh, from what I've found reported on these guys. Uh, obviously, humans have been bitten, and obviously nobody could get a exact number of reported cases. But these guys uh, aren't the most defensive snakes. In fact, most of the people that get bitten by them in the wild uh, are stepping on them. Uh, in the in the forest they inhabit or uh, in, in the fields they inhabit or, or wherever. Um, they're very good at camouflaging themselves uh, into leaf litter uh, or into their surroundings. Um, 
And uh, most of the time when you see them in their enclosures, if you have an enclosure set up close to their natural habitat, you'll find that they've dug themselves in somewhere. And really the only thing you can usually see is their head popping above the substrate. Uh, and sometimes their head's even buried in the substrate. And all you'll see is their eyelids popping up over the substrate. And uh, it's kind of neat to watch. Um, you know, you'll walk by their enclosures from time to time to check on them. And you'll see their pupils move on their eyes. So their body won't move, uh, but their pupils move. And they mimic this and they do this in the wild, uh, having their pupils move just above whatever whatever substrate, whatever dirt, whatever, whatever type of environment they're in, uh, because the pupils by themselves moving uh, imitate, you know, a small, possibly a small animal or something that their prey can chase after. And these guys are really, really great ambush hunters. Uh, you know, uh, this guy, fortunately for me, takes live and frozen. Uh, I prefer to feed most of my venomous snakes frozen, uh, frozen thawed. Uh, but <clears throat> their hunting characteristics are, are, are really neat compared to some other snakes. And the speed at which they can move and strike... Uh, and when I say move, their locomotion isn't that fast. They're not a fast-moving snake across the ground. Uh, but they can strike like that. Um, you know, an unsuspecting rodent uh, or uh, whatever other prey item may be going by them, whether it be, a, you know, avian like a bird, uh, lizard uh, for some of the smaller ones. Uh, usually they don't have a chance to get away from these guys. Um, I have a picture of, uh, I believe I have a picture of the fangs uh, in my in my camera that I'll post on the video just to kind of see, but once these guys grab on, you're not getting out, and uh, they do envenomate pretty quickly. Uh, the Rhino Viper has uh, hematoxic venom and, uh, and neurotoxic venom, so uh, it, it does affect your, your blood and your circulatory system, and also affects the nervous system, uh, which is different from... Uh, Bitis rhinoceros, or the western gaboon, uh, who's only got a hematoxic venom uh, that, that basically affects the blood and the circulatory system. Uh, they lack a neurotoxic venom. Um, so when these, when these guys hit, when these guys uh, envenomate whatever their prey is, uh, death isn't very long after that. Uh, and they have a characteristic when they hunt of almost arching their front of their bodies up like a cobra when they have the prey in their mouth um and it's 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 really a sight to see and and whatever's in their mouth isn't getting out like i said uh the first meal that i fed my rhino uh happened to be live because i wanted to make sure that i could get get her established and get her eating um and in all the years that i've i've been around snakes in general uh, this is the first time that I've ever seen a snake uh, avoid a bite from their prey by literally cocking its head and pulling the head of the rat away from its neck. Um, you know, constrictors, when they're, when they're taking live prey, uh, typically they're going to take bites too because when they're wrapped around a rat, there's really nowhere for them to go. There's, I mean... You're, they're kind of stuck. I mean, they've wrapped the rat. If they get a bad rap, if they get a bad rap on the rat, and the rat, it's a live rat, they're getting bit. Um, and really, they can't let go because if they let go of that constriction, they risk the prey getting away and they lose a meal. Uh, so constrictors will typically take a bite. Um, this girl was intelligent enough to where it saw the rat's head getting very close to her, and literally she cocked her head to pull the rat's nose away from her neck to avoid getting bit. Um, now, whether it's, a, uh, whether it's a instinct for them uh, for safety precautions uh, or the intelligence inside, which is the reptile brain, and we're not going to get into that. Um, you know, we don't know exactly how intelligent they are. But uh, instinct in this particular snake was just amazing to watch. So uh, sit tight. I'll pull the rhino out. We can take a look at her and... Uh, kind of go over her body, her body shape, and we'll go from there. All right, all. Uh, so as promised, we have our Bettis nasocornis out here, uh, our rhino viper. And uh, you can see just the beautiful colors 
that uh, that she exhibits. Um, very mellow snakes, typically. Um, you know, a lot of times when they get a little upset, they'll uh, they'll release a loud hiss out. Uh, you know, kind of a uh, kind of a leave me the hell alone type thing. Um, you know, we uh, treat them with respect. Uh, obviously, this is a snake that many can become complacent with, um, just because of how mellow they are. Uh, but it is not a snake that you want to become complacent with. Uh, it is a snake that you want to respect at all times. Uh, it's a snake that uh, can obviously turn at any time, and you just want to uh, you want to be careful. You want to keep your eye on them. Uh, obviously, their reaction time is a lot faster than yours is. Um, you know, so you just want to respect this snake. You want to let it do its thing. Um, these guys are excellent at pancaking their bodies and flattening themselves. Uh, it's actually pretty cool to watch. Um, but, uh, you know, as you can see, just the awesome colorful patterns that they have. Um, and uh, their, their, their pattern closely reflects the gaboon with the exception of the colors. Uh, you can see top of their head, the beautiful triangle they have on top of their head, uh, triangle shape. Uh, I'll try to zoom in a little bit so you can see their, uh, their horns on their nose. Um, but this one uh, is about two years old. Uh, unfortunately, it is an import wild caught. Uh, I'd love to get me a captive bred one. Uh, but this one's eating. Uh, it seems to be doing pretty well. Um, it's uh, shedding excellent, uh, doing everything it's supposed to. Uh, fecal tested negative on it. So uh, we don't have any internal parasites we're worried about with this particular one. Um, so just all around a beautiful specimen. Uh, but their locomotion uh, is, is actually really pretty neat if you watch their body. Uh, you actually watch the muscles uh, in the sides of their body. Uh, and they almost move, almost looks like they have caterpillar legs on them. Uh, it's, it's really neat and the gaboons move the same way. Um, but... Uh, it's just if you watch the side of their bodies, they're not very fast, but they just, they're a really, really neat snake. Um, again, these guys have the ability to strike any which way. They can strike backwards, they can strike up, they can strike sideways, and they can do it from a dead stop. So they don't have to be, uh, they don't have to be uh, kind of coiled like a viper does. Uh, they don't have to exhibit that standard S shape. Uh, they can go from zero to a hundred just like that. And uh, once they do, uh, it could be bad news, especially if you're not paying attention. So uh, definitely a snake you want to respect, just like all venomous snakes. Uh, a snake you want to, uh, it's a snake that you just don't want to let get to you. Um, because once you put your guard down is when it's going to bite you in the ass, uh, literally. So, um, but this is my girl. Uh, can't wait to watch her grow another couple years. Uh, I like slow growing uh, any of my bit of species. Uh, a lot of people out there uh, like to power feed them uh, and they end up with these fat gaboons or fat rhino vipers and you know snakes two years old and you know it's four feet long and it's just a big chub and basically you're really cutting down on the snake's life uh, when you do that. Um, you know I uh, I'm not in it for the status portion. I don't care how long this, this girl stays small for. Uh, I want her to grow slow, I want her to be healthy, and I want her to live a long life. Um, so that's that's my ultimate goal with this girl. Uh, and she's got some size on her already. She's, uh, you know, she's about two and a half feet long, uh, and she's got some good girth on her. Uh, she's in real good shape. Looks like she's done pretty well eating, so... Um, that's really it with her. So we're going to go ahead and looks like she's getting a little restless. So we're going to go ahead and put her back in her enclosure and let her chill and uh, go from there. So uh, just wrapping up, uh, that was my uh, Bittus nasocornis, my Rhino Viper. Uh, beautiful pickup uh, that I got. Um, you could see just the exquisite pattern and colors that she has. Uh, really, really a beautiful specimen of the species. Uh, and I really can't wait to see her continue to grow. Um, but uh, as always, feel free to like the video. Um, 
obviously more more species to come, uh, both venomous and non-venomous. Uh, but uh, I felt this girl is going to become quickly a, a favorite part of my collection, so I figured I'd share her first. But uh, I thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.